buildings roman means it's 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 a way of describing a piece of literature that has that quality uh, of you know following the moral development of a character through a text and so um I don't think that's literally what this exhibition is about but it's it's about a, a body of work that um uh that is both coming to be you know within its own making um and um one which comes from a narrative source all of the objects in the exhibition are um are narrative sculpture in that way they come out of a a narrative Typically the the process starts with with the writing of the the uh the films and then the films are made and then the sculpture is made from the the narrative First of all I think it's important to say that it's a collection of works that belong to the Astrid Fernley mine and um and so that's the nature of this grouping we're working with the 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 pieces that they own and um and because there are significant installations from um a number of different narratives I wanted to focus the exhibition on that relationship between the narrative and the object. Um which is why in this case the the videos are hanging uh, often over the sculpture so that relationship can be be clear. There are three films here in the installation. and then a fourth video installation from an earlier piece so in fact there are a lot of opportunities to to see the films here um on the other hand i think when somebody's looking at sculpture they're not standing for 3 hours and watching a film so they're being they're installed here as a as a kind of uh ambience I think the the space that one occupies between um the the narrative and the object is um I think quite important in this installation and and maybe a little more literal than uh, other exhibitions I've made you know where the narrative might be in a cinema and the object might be in the exhibition space and the that leap has to be made in the mind you know I think here it can be made in the body you can stand in that space between the two so it's um this is a different kind of exhibition for me I don't really see anything as an individual thing you know they're all parts of a greater whole but I think the the films can function on their own and um and that's a very different thing than having them suspended over the installation downstairs for example I got interested in um 
you know, by way of the River of Fundament project, which uh, was using a, a novel called Ancient Evenings as its um, starting point or its source. And um, this story takes place in ancient Egypt, and, uh, and so it describes a lot of um, things within the kind of Egyptian mythological structure. Um, and one of them which reoccurs is a description of uh, metallurgy or um, the different metals which um, the Egyptians were, were using um, uh, for different um, functions, you know, both uh, symbolic and, uh, and, and more um, um, kind of everyday in function. And uh, so I became quite interested in, in how that description of material could inform a body of sculpture. And, uh, and so nearly all of the River of Fundament sculpture is cast metal. And, um, and the, it ranges from base metals like iron and zinc and, um, and then moves through copper and into the alloys, brass and bronze, um, and into silver and into gold. So there's a kind of a, there's a, a let's say an alchemical progression through these metals that's, um, that's described in the text and, and therefore expressed in the sculpture. I think I'm interested in, in myths as a way of, I mean, they've been quite useful to me as a, um, as a kind of narrative body that, that my narrative could inhabit. And, um, and I think that mythologies have a kind of, um, you know, they're shared by all of us and they have a kind of um, uh, the capability of being a kind of vessel that holds us, yeah? And I think when I tend to think about my work and how I work, I tend to think of my language as a kind of um, virus or a, a host, or a, sorry, a guest that, that's in search of a host body. So these um, myths, and I think it, it, the Egyptian mythology is, is such a familiar one. It's, um, it's a quite available um, host body. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, it's also been interpreted so many times that it's a difficult one to abstract. So I think when I first considered using Ancient Evenings as a text, it was, um, I was very nervous about the limitations of such a familiar narrative. Water castings came last, um, and they're by far the most abstract pieces in the body of work. But I think they still connect to the narrative by way of the water and by way of water displacement. The the and more specifically to the myth of, of, of Isis and the tears of Isis falling into the, the Nile and the Nile flooding each year. Um, I had originally thought of making the water castings by pouring um, molten metal into a river and, uh, and then retrieving the object from the river. 
and um, after doing some tests and learning that we needed more than water, um, we decided to do the these castings in a, a more controlled way in a foundry. The process involved taking molten bronze and pouring it into a kind of um, slurry of, of mud, basically, a mixture of clay and water. And, um, um, we started this process by working at a very small scale with, um, with metals like zinc, which melt at a much lower temperature, and pouring them into, directly into water and watching how the metal would behave when it came in contact with the water. And as we increased the scale, we learned that, um, that the metal needed more resistance than water could give. And, um, you know, when it's smaller, you have the surface tension of the water is enough to slow down the metal and give it a chance to congeal before it gets to the bottom of the container. But as you increase the scale of the, the uh, metal or the volume of metal, it, the surface tension of the water doesn't do anything. It, it, uh, the metal goes straight to the bottom. So we started adding different um, materials into the water to try to thicken and, um, and ended up with a material that um, is called bentonite. It's a clay. And <clears throat> the bentonite slurry was able to um, provide enough moisture to react with metal. What happens is the metal comes in contact with the moisture, and the moisture expands into steam, and it, it uh, explodes the metal out into the container. So um, all of these sort of you know, very fine, thin um, textures are created by sending the metal out into the spaces between the wet clay. And um, so um, this particular piece, White Dwarf, also has this um, layer of of uh, plastic. It's a prototyping plastic that um, is called polycaprolactone and that has been, the piece has been effectively dipped in, in plastic after the bronze piece was made. Mm -hmm. I mean this is the only one, there, there are uh, 14 of them and this yeah. is the only one that's, that is uh, covered in plastic and I th I think it has to do with, um, there's a description in, in Ancient Evenings that, that is to do with the, the deity Set, or Seth, who's kind of the god of chaos, and um, he's the, the jealous brother of, of Osiris, and he ends up killing Osiris, and Osiris then ends up in the underworld. Set has a kind of, um, like set was used to, to describe uh, a storm or a kind of a natural disaster, for example. Like he's responsible for these kind of things that are out of our control, you know, kind of. An amb he has an ambivalence that's quite um, strong. And, um, and so there's a passage in the novel that describes the uh, the the se semen of Set, which um, you know, he's, he's a very uh, sexual person in the uh, hypersexual person in the text, and and so he kind of indiscriminately is um, you know fucking whomever, whenever, and uh, and when. Uh, the law says that when the, the semen of a god um, does not go into another god, it's the development of a new disease. So it's a kind of, uh, it's a sort of a description of toxicity, basically.
through the the uh, irreverence or the irresponsibility of, of um, not just Set, but a number of the other deities are described that way as being very irresponsible with their power. I mean, I guess I'm interested in you know, I'm interested in a lot of the things that end up in the work, for sure. Um, but I don't like all of them. I think it's probably um, something that's misunderstood. That I think for me it's quite, a, it, it's important to create a kind of balance between things that I'm um, quite that I feel quite close to, and then things that I feel really quite repellent to. And, um, and I think that the Ancient Evenings novel is a really good example of something like that. It's not necessarily a, a book that I really wanted to adapt into a film and celebrate. It was something that I felt like I could, I could relate to in part and really despise in part. And I think that that conflict is really important for me in terms of my subject matter.